looks like we're talking about palismans today. Now, palismans are some of the most useful items that a witch could ever come across, not only because they have various attributes that make them incredibly useful, but also due to the fact that when they are bound to, they are some of the most loyal best friends that a witch could ever hope for. Now, before we actually get into those particular aspects of palismans, let's go ahead and talk about exactly what a palisman is. Now, a palisman is a magical artifact created by wizards utilizing palestrum wood, and it's particularly used in order to enhance one's magical capabilities by basically adding on to the magic they already possess, as well as utilizing it as a magic conduit to make spell casting easier. Now, every single palisman possesses its own innate magical capabilities, and each one has its own unique powers that it can bestow upon its wielder. These abilities include, but are not limited to, shooting fireballs, invisibility, flight, as well as things such as shooting gigantic dark energy blast at people. And I'm just gonna mention this real quick, if I am ever put into a scenario where I get myself a palisman and its ability allows me to slightly glow in the dark and you can shoot energy blast straight out of My Hero Academia or JoJo's Bizarre Adventures, I'm becoming a dark mage right then and there. Now, palismans also possess their own magical reservoir, meaning that as long as you are holding one and you do not possess any magical power left, you can utilize theirs in order to cast a spell. You can also utilize their magical reservoirs to cast normal magic as long as you have the knowledge to cast said spell. This is actually how Hunter is able to utilize his unique form of magic due to the fact that he does not possess any magic himself, so he's able to draw power from his palisman or a scepter or basically anything that contains magic for him to use. Do be aware, however, that if you utilize their own power in order to do spells, if you're not used to utilizing a palisman's power, it may become a little bit difficult for you to utilize your magic at 100% capability, and it's also a possibility that the spell would just fail if it doesn't have enough magical power for the spell to be cast in the first place. Regardless, some magic is way better than no magic, which is why a palisman is honestly much better in the hands of a human than a witch, because at least with a human, it pretty much means that they can finally utilize magic rather than being completely powerless. Actually, after giving it some thought, it's quite possible that she utilized the power in a palisman in order to keep up in her magical classes after the death of glyphs. So we covered what they are, we covered what they do, let's go ahead and talk about how exactly you can go about obtaining one. Now you can make one yourself as I said earlier, however one thing that a lot of people tend to forget is that this thing will not actually do anything until you go under some kind of emotional tangent over something. You have to be feeling some kind of strong emotion or go under some kind of revelation in order for them to respond to you because they respond to strong emotions and desires that they can personally get behind. Remember, these guys are sentient and intelligent and unlike high school kids will choose their relationships very carefully. However, once they choose you, that's it. You have been chosen and they will not go anywhere unless you abandon them personally. These guys will gladly sacrifice their life any day of the week just on the idea that you could be safe. They are literally your ride or die in terms of the magical world. So not only do they help you mentally, physically, as well as magically, they'll even go out of their way to be your best friend, warning you of particular dangers or if you're making a poor decision, at least from their point of view. Now the actual shape of a palisman is directly tied to who crafted it as well as what happened when they originally manifested, such as when the person went under the revelation. A good example of this would be Luz, as when she created her, she originally made it in the form of an egg for it to basically grow along with her, but when she went through her revelation, it completely transformed into an entirely new palisman with the ability to shapeshift into pretty much every other talisman. Now, it should also be known that the palisman that you do end up collecting tends to go directly towards whatever goal you possess, meaning that if you were to have the goal of becoming the most powerful wizard in all of creation, you're probably going to get a pretty powerful palisman if they want to get behind that. Now, moving on to the dark magic aspects of thing, there's another way you can take advantage of palismans, and it's eating them. No, I am not kidding. Eating them is one of the best things that you can do for yourself. No, I don't mean just biting their little heads off. No, that's not what I mean. I mean absorbing the magic contained within palismans in order to basically bolster yourself. If you are familiar with the technique of absorbing the magic of other life forms, you can actively consume the magic within them in order to give yourself a permanent increase to your magical capabilities. Additionally, the essence of palismans have incredibly large amounts of life energy, meaning that when you consume them, it will not only give you a bolster to your own magical capabilities, but it will also fully fully rejuvenate your body, healing additional wounds that you may have at the moment. This will also prolong your lifespan. If you consume enough palismans, you could theoretically live for centuries, which is exactly what Bellows ended up doing within the show. Bellows, by the time the story began, had already consumed thousands upon thousands of palismans. In order to give you an idea of just how many he consumed, the amount of palismans within the Boiling Isles was at an all-time low, and the forests were basically gone. Now granted, absorbing their essence into yourself, although it does bolster your magical capabilities, prolongs your life, heals your wounds, there are a couple of negatives when you do this. One major one is that when you consume them, they don't exactly die. Instead, their consciousness is put into your subconscious where they will continuously nag you and pretty much make you either remember them or somewhat mess with you mentally or physically. Due to the fact that Bellows had consumed so many of them, he had a literal monster in his subconscious that was actively being a pain in his side and making his form unstable. Well, more unstable than it's supposed to be. However, despite this obvious downside, this is one of the many reasons why 
Belos was literally the most powerful mage in all of the Boiling Isles, if not ever, not including divine beings such as the Collector or the Titans themselves. Anyway, that's all I got for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and thanks to all my Patreons down on the Patreon. Well, even though I said Patreon, I keep saying Patreon for the love of God, just say their names. We got Daniel Turp, Going to La La Land, the Mononic Sailor, Christopher Alver, Chikaya Pippinger, Jay, and finally a new one, Christopher Robbins, and I hope to God I said all of your names right. Thank you all for supporting the channel. It really does mean a lot, and if you guys want to support me, go down to the link below because it's going to be there where you can go onto the Patreon with each tier having its own unique benefits, including being put in the credits as you see here, the middle ground having access to audios as well as future representation as well as updates. And as always, I will see you in the next video. I don't know why I'm doing this voice. Anyway, bye. <laughs>